Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So let us uh, start this lecture with a thought process from great scientist Albert Einstein who says, no, this trick won't work. How on the earth are you ever going to explain in terms of chemistry and physics so important a biological phenomena as first love? You know, first love is very important, I like you know, very memorable for all of you and all of us rather. So I mean, it cannot be explained through chemistry and physics what Albert Einstein is talking about. But let us recall what we learned in the last lecture. We are basically looking at types of you know elementary reactions, chain branching, chain initiating, chain carrying, chain terminating. Then we use those you know chain branching reactions to explain how this chemical explosion will be occurring, right. And uh, today uh, what we will do, we will basically look at multi-step chemistry. And uh, later on, I will be dealing with how to minimize the number of chemical steps in the multi-step chemistry, such that it can be tractable, right. So, let us uh, look at a multi-step chemistry reaction for methane, which is a very simple, you know, hydrocarbons, right. And uh, if you look at the methane molecule will be reacting with, let us say there is a uh, radical, you know, of course. And then what will happen? C S 3 plus S 2. And this is what kind of reaction? This is basically chain carrying because C S 3 is a radical and H is a radical, right. So, the ratio is 1 this is a chain carrying reaction, yes or no, right. And similarly, you can say that radical pull is there, so that C H 4 is uh, you know reacting with O going to the C S 3 and O H. In this case, what will be? Chain branching, right. And C H 4 plus O H getting into C S 3 and water. What is this? This is basically chain what? Carrying, is not it? Only one radical in the product and this thing and the reactant 1. So, if you look at let us say CH4 is reacting with H, O, OH, any one of them you know. That means, 3 reaction I have given. It can go to CS3 and other thing, these 3 reactions. You know that is the indication, and then also it can go backward direction. This is forward if I say KF, and this is backward direction. CS3 can be combined with S2, you know, uh, or H and uh, something else, and we get into that, right? And C to CS3 will be, you know, uh, reacting with CS3, get into C2H6, right? And C 2 H 6 can be converted into C 2 H 5 and C 2 H 5 can be converted into C 2 H 4, it can be getting into C 2 H 3, you know reacting with the what you call H and O H, it can go get into the C 2 H 2, it can get into C S 2 and then from this reacting with it get to the product oxygen, this is a you know some root. And there is another C S 3 can be converted into C S 2 O. And then C S 2 can be reacting with H O H getting into C H O and C O right and then C O will be reacting with O H getting into C O 2. Similarly, there will be several reaction will be taking place here that way in this direction and then this, there several product will be formed C 2 S 3 can come into C 2 S 2 plus O H reacting with this products. And similarly, from here it can C S 3. So, what I was trying, I am trying to show you in this multi-step reaction mechanism, you know, anything and everything can occur. It is not that this is the thing what is occurring in nature, 
okay this is the model what people have devised what exactly is happening god only knows or maybe in future some of you will do and say look this is the model i am proposing <laughs> right better model so are you getting it's a, so complicated but what i am going to show you and this will be containing something maybe you know uh, around um, 28 species kind of things and then we more and maybe uh, something 200 odd reaction or more but i will not be discussing that it will be, you know it will be very difficult you can't observe also if you want to look at then you can look at chemistry of combustion one book is there by gardiner is a one book chemistry of combustion okay <laughs> then you can look at that chemistry about that. <laughs> so, what I will show you, I will show you kinetics data for methane air system which I had used long time back, 20 years back okay, for my PhD thesis. So, I am just showing here, this contains something 14 species and 40 reactions, these are all 40 reactions and keep in mind that here only C1 chemistry, that means C2S6, C2 like uh, you know uh, H5, H3 are not there <laughs> right and this is uh, for the forward reaction you can get the backward reaction all these coefficients you know this is your active uh, pre exponential factor A and this is the M coefficient here values are given e is the activation energy right and you can calculate the reverse reaction rate by using what? this reaction rate you can calculate this is k f and this is k b you can calculate it using the equilibrium at what the way we did you can calculate right and then use that one and this is giving uh, this is giving fairly well the about prediction of burning velocities and ignition delay and other things okay and this simple one and this can be uh, computed even in your personal you know computers like so now, if you look at, uh, as I told, people are using very, you know, long, what you call number of reactions being used in chemical reactions for methane air and other higher hydrocarbon because, of course, nowadays CNG being used, which contains methane, but it contains some other higher hydrocarbons also. But higher hydrocarbon means more number of species involved, more number of reactions, and it will take a lot of time to compute, right? And unless you are having a parallel computing and if you are doing a very complicated problem like a internal combustion engine or gas turbine engine or rocket engines, you know, like it will be hell of affairs to predict something meaningful using kinetics. Okay. So, therefore, there is a need to reduce this mechanism and coming to the global kinetics or maybe two step chemistry, three step chemistry, or maybe five step chemistry. There are various models are there. So, for that, we will be discussing two uh, methodology only, there are several other also, one is quasi steady state approximation method model. In this case, what is being assumed that you assume it has reached a steady state and in this case we know that radicals form during combustion, right? and radicals life, half life is very, very small as compared to stable spaces. Okay. So, therefore, I can say the rate of radical formation is equal to rate of radical destruction. I can say that because, I, you know, in the certain time during that thing, it will be there after that it will not be there, right. It is like your, uh, if you look at the time scale of the our, uh, let us say, India, Indus Valley civilization and ours is like a radical, we will be here doing something contributing and then go away after that we won't be there similarly radicals you know is the role is that so therefore we can say the rate of radical formation is equal to rate of radical destruction for that reason we need to relate the radical concentration with measurable concentration of other species why we are saying because radical you cannot measure it is very difficult to measure radicals okay of course people are devising very sophisticated instruments still it will be difficult Right, because this will be in the order of femtoseconds, you know, not microsecond, nano, femto, right, that kind of seconds. It will vary. So, therefore, we can, uh, you know, make this assumption. And we want to, uh, basic idea of this analysis also to 
you know relate this concentration of radicals in terms of stable spaces concentration which you can measure. So, how to relate this radical concentration with that of the stable spaces is the question what will be you know using uh, you know addressing by using this approximation. So, for that we will have to invoke quasi steady state approximation let us consider that A is uh, react you know uh, converted into A 2 with the reaction rate of K 1 and this I can say reaction 1 and then A 2 is converted into uh, to A 3 is a 2 reaction. So, if you look at this is basically a series reaction is not it A 1 is getting into A 2 then A 2 is getting into A 3. Now, reaction rate of these 3 species right if you look at d c a 1 by d t is nothing but minus k 1 c a 1 right and d c a 2 by d t is nothing but k 1 c a 1 minus k 2 c a 2 right. Because this is coming from reaction 1 this one from reaction 1 this is from reaction 2 and d c a 3 is from basically from reaction 1 that is k 2 c a 2 right. So, if I say this is basically what you call this is 3 and this is your 4 and this is your 5 right equation I will have to solve this thing and relate and do some approximation by doing that right. So, what will be the initial condition? Initial condition at time t c a will be c initial and c a 2 will be 0, c a 3 will be 0 yes or no? This will be 0 there will be no uh, c a 2 right concentration will be 0 of a 2 molecule and concentration of a 3 will be 0 this is the initial condition which will be using right. Now, I will take this uh, equation 3 right and try to integrate right. So, by integrating equation 3 we can get basically d c a 1 d t k 1 d t. I can write down this is l n c a 1 is equal to minus k 1 t plus c 1. And what will be c 1? I will have to apply the boundary uh, initial condition right at t is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 c a 1 will be c a in is not it yes or no. So, that means at t is equal to 0 this will be 0 and then what will be c 1? c 1 will be basically l n c a 1 in. So, uh, then I can write down you know from this I can write down c a 1 is equal to c a 1 in e power 3 k 1 t. If I take this is 6 right this will be 7 and what we will do we will use this using equation 7 in equation 4 right equation 4 we will get d c a 2 by d t is k 1 c a i in 1 ok this is a 1 e power to the minus k 1 t minus k 2 c a 2 right this we want to solve right 
if you look at this equation right is which form this is a differential this is a ordinary differential equation of first order right and this is uh, which form are you not getting okay let me write down here you will get catch it very easily right is plus k2 ca2 right right is equal to k1 ca i in e k1 t this is which form that is if you look at dy by dx plus px y is equal to qx form right this is the first order od inhomogeneous right so now i want to solve i know the solution solution what is that solution we will have to find out basically integrating factor right in this case what will be integrating factor integrating factor right what it would be it will be e k2 dt because this is your px right this is your y so that is equal to e k2 t right so then what will happen i will get this solution the solution this is okay let me write down this is 8 this is 8 okay 8 the solution for equation 8 okay what it would be it will be c a 2 e k 2 t is equal to right e k 2 t k 1 c a 1 in this is the term i am writing now q x right uh, e power t k 1 t d t right is not it. So, now I will not uh, do that you will have to do this thing by applying this initial condition right by applying initial condition that already we have discussed this is your initial condition right right so i can get a solution like this right if i say this is uh, 9 right equation 9 becomes ca2 is equal to ca in k1 by k2 minus k1 t minus k2 t right this is your equation okay now we will have to basically look at now expression for the ca3 right and we will what will do we will have to use this thing see uh, equation 10 here why because uh, if you recall that equation 4 right is expressed in terms of c a 2 right because we know c a 3 right we know that d c a 3 by d t is nothing but k 2 c a 2 so, by using equation 10, we can get this is equation 5. Equation 5 becomes dCA3 by dt is equal to k2 CAI in k1 k2 minus k2 minus k1 e minus k1 t minus k2 t right and i love to integrate this equation like this is let us say 11 by integrating 
equation 11 and using initial condition right we can get i am omitting some steps okay we can get c a 3 is equal to c a in k 1 e k 2 t divided by k 1 minus k 2 plus k 2 e minus k 1 t divided by k 1 minus k 2 this you will get this expression right. So, you can get and using initial condition initial condition here t is equal to 0 c a is equal to c a initial 1 initial and c a 2 is 0 and c a 3 is 0 right. So, you will have to apply that and you will get this. Let us now look at I mean you can get this thing expression what I have shown. Now, what we will do this is the analytical form right you are getting and analytical form if I just uh, do that thing with respect to time you will get this is a 1 a 1 is decreasing right and a 3 is increasing that is you know obvious thing right and a 2 is there is a little peak here and then after that remaining same with this these are analytical tools right but let us say you know it is a very simple one we are getting analytically but in the complex one we won't be we will be doing some approximation that is quasi steady state approximation right and if i look at what i am doing by applying this method we are saying that ca2 intermediate that space is ca2 which will be not remaining i am saying it is zero it is remaining zero kind of thing like the change in zero so therefore k1 ca1 is equal to k2 ca2 right then i can write down as is a very simple one right <coughs> and so therefore earlier it was basically ca3 is equal to k2 ca2 right is equal to k2 ca2 and then i am saying this is k1 co1 right are you getting okay so ca3 is if you look at ca1 right in place of ca1 i have already got this result from the beginning right and then i can get this one so by integrating above this uh, equation right we can get that uh, this is basically c a 3 is equal to c a 1 in 1 minus k 1 t and this is very easy you can do that right. So, now I got these values you know c a 3 in terms of c a 1 and uh, c a uh, 2 right and then I can plot these values this will be possible only when k 2 is greater than k 1 k 2 is very fast reaction as compared to the k 1 otherwise you cannot apply this kind of you know um, approximation if you do that what you will get you will get basically the similar values for the c a 1 right concentration and keep in mind this is concentration of i s species with respect to initial species right of a 1 and respect but and also you will get similar prediction for the a 3 there is no problem but problem is here right it is having some finite value at 0 which is not true right because in the beginning it was supposed to be like that 0 right I have shown but it is not true that means this is violating it is not possible to have that but however later on it is same. So, if I am considering in this region then it will be fine it is predicting well. So, therefore, this is the limitation of this approximation method, but however, we can simplify the reactions and we can also express in terms of that. Let us look at the partial equilibrium approximation, right. There is a quasi steady state that means something is uh, you know attaining the steady state, but here we are saying partial equilibrium approximation and why it is required because the reaction 
you know certain reaction will be having faster rate, certain reaction will be slower rate and if it is faster rate then we can say it is quickly attaining the equilibrium, are you getting? It is quickly attaining because it is very fast. So, therefore, we call it as a quasi equilibrium state or partial equilibrium like kind of thing. The partial equilibrium expression concentration unknown species in terms of known concentration. So, how is P A is carried out? Let us consider NO formation mechanism like O is reacting N 2 is getting into NO plus N right. And uh, let us say this k f value is given to you right, this some coefficients is known to you. And reaction rate of N O species I can write down d c N O divided by d t is equal to k f c O N 2. Keep in mind that c O is a radical, the concentration of O is difficult to measure right, this is a radical right and N 2 is a stable species. So, you can very easily measure right and however, you need both concentration of O and N 2 to determine the uh, reaction rate of the N O. Now, how to go about it and what we can say the rate of formation destruction of O is very high that is the assumption right because it is a very fast. So, will be and with this uh, as a result of course, it is very difficult to measure the concentration of O that I have already. Now, how will handle it? Basically, what you will have to do? We will have to invoke the equilibrium okay. and step 1 assume the partial equilibrium O 2 molecules right. That means, I will take consider that uh, and then try to relate O 2 with the molecule with the O right and I will consider O 2 is getting into 2 O and then it has attained equilibrium right. From that I will find out equilibrium constant K C is equal to C O concentration of O 2 half right. If I know this K C at certain temperature of course right then I can very easily substitute this C O by concentration of O 2 and then I will get C O is nothing but K C concentration of O 2 power to the half and reaction rate of species became K F K C concentration of O 2 half into 0.5 C N right. Uh, this is basically the reaction rate to N O is a function of concentration of O 2 and C N 2 of course, K C is there and K F is there, but concentration wise the C N 2 will be playing a major role not the oxygen right. So, what is the difference between P A and quasi static state approximation? P A is the partial equilibrium approximation right, reaction attains a steady state that means, this reaction attaining a steady state, but in this case species attain the steady state there is a difference are you getting? And uh, as I told this is the part of this reaction uh, whatever we example we have considered is a thermal NO. Though thermal NO or the NO formation due to temperature is less dependent on concentration of O 2 because this is power half. So, therefore, it is less dependent and it is dependent on the temperature therefore, we call it as a temp, uh, you know um, thermal NO and NO reduction by reducing the combustion temperature you can get you know you can reduce the uh, NO formation due to of course, the thermal mechanism by reducing the temperature. So, keep in mind that in real situation particular reaction may not attain equilibrium ok. Therefore, you will have to apply it cautiously and P A partially can provide satisfied result only at the high temperature. It would not give you you know good approximation at the low temperature. For example, we will consider that let us say that I am having a C 3 H 8 air flame at uh, 0 0.1 uh, mega Pascal and 298 and then I am plotting what you call concentration profiles right these are concentration of species 
versus the what you call flame flame means across the flame if there is a flame here let us say right I am going by the z direction this is my flame ok one dimensional flame and this is z direction I am plotting z. Now, what will happen of course, this is your temperature right this side is the scale is temperature and this is your propane propane is given. So, therefore, my you know like kind of things and what will happen to the O right. If I say detailed mechanism this is a solid line, but if, if I take partial equilibrium mechanism O will be like this. That means, and if I take only equilibrium which you have done this is the data is here is remaining constant it is not changing are you getting. So, therefore, at this equilibrium at the high temperature zone because if you look at if I am saying this is your z this is 0 my flame is here somewhere nearby. So, therefore, the temperature here will be higher and this temperature will be very low in this region right because this is a temperature na? in this region temperature is very high. So, at the high temperature this both are partial equilibrium detail mechanism is approximately same or almost same and this is possible only on the high temperature, but if I consider here in this region it will be diametrical it is not wrong it is not right because the here temperature is uh, not that high as compared to this and if I consider here in somewhere where lower temperature is there. So, it will be quite different. So, therefore, partial equilibrium method has to be applied at the high temperature only ok. Global kinetics why you will go for global kinetics why not multi step chemistry because you know there are several reaction mechanism we would like to involve we would like to consider to get a predictions. And if we will do that the computationally it will be very difficult and analytically impossible you cannot have anything analytical analytical means you could write equation and do that impossible even computationally it will be very very uh, what you call costly. So, therefore, we always go for a global kinetics particularly if the flow problem is complex or the engineering problem like your IC engine, gas turbine engine other thing. Therefore, there is a need to go for global kinetics what is that? Uh, that is basically single step uh, you know combustion you can say people are talking about uh, what you call reduce mechanism two steps or three steps, but I will consider as a single step as a global kinetics. Let us say methane one mole of methane reacting with two moles of oxygen getting into carbon dioxide and two moles of water right. And whether the reaction occur in nature certainly no it is just a model right. And overall reaction I can write down CH 4 dt is equal to A E exponential factor of you know like uh, this you explain activation energy this is your activation energy right. And R u is a universal gas constant T is temperature and this is the concentration of methane and oxygen and these are coefficients these are coefficients that has to be obtained and this generally obtained by matching the heat release profile right. And this A values is the pre exponential factors right and which has to be obtained you know the some values. So, and um, you can get a kinetic scheme for arbitrary uh, hydrocarbons right and this is the things you can you know it is a similar I can instead of methane I am just writing C x h y m n right are you getting this is just a generalizing. Now, I can get this you know in terms of a tabular data and then or the data will be there in the table and you can use that or you can conduct experiment and keep in mind that this data what I am going to show you is basically for various you know fuel and this is the pre exponential factor a f or a whatever you call is the same as a what I am using and activation temperature basically e by r u is nothing but your activation temperature right and this given and m is our coefficients right. Keep in mind that these values will be varying from various resources you know like or various sources rather. It is not that it will be same that is why I was telling this A A values will be you know quite different and then uh, so also activation energy here he has taken all activity same 
need not to be this from the just a you know kind of things people have done modeling and then use it it need not to be same okay are you getting my point this number will be very different from you know various sources if we use so generally we use this thing and i will uh, stop over with this and in the next lecture we will be discussing about physics of the combustion part thank you very much